Hello, Nicholas. How are you? Hey, I'm uh, doing fantastic. What about you, Matt? I'm doing good. It looks like you're back in your office. Where were you last week for last week's podcast? <laughs> I know. I was actually sitting on the lobby of an hotel here uh, here in Atlanta. We there was I was at the retail local. Pretty great show, actually. It was. And, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Amazing. It was all about localization and retail. Amazing show. Met some really awesome people, but. The thing is, I couldn't find a spot to actually have a, a quiet room. And so I ended up sitting on the lobby, do the podcast. I'm glad people didn't notice, though. Anytime, anywhere. That's that's the best part of this. Let's get oh, started. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Nico. I am your co-host. I am with Eastreamly. And today I'm joined with our special co-host, Matt from E6 Marketing. So excited to have you, Matt, again. This is going to be another episode, awesome episode. And every day, we, uh, every Friday, we are here for you. Uh, so why don't you start, Matt? What, tell, tell us why we're here. Nicholas, this is, well, thank you very much. And I'm excited to be here. This is the V-Commerce Show. We talk about video commerce, which is the live streaming selling platform that was invented over 50 years ago, probably with uh, infomercials, QVC and HSN. And now that you could buy everything and almost anything and everywhere off your phone, off your tablet, off your computer. And we just talk about the hottest, biggest topics of the week and hopefully engage you with some interesting ideas and conversation and get you excited about video shopping. So, Nicholas, let's get started. Yeah, awesome. Super excited to be here. Uh, before we start, want to thank the audience for being here. We had a really great response so far. Please uh, feel free to comment. We are actually live on different platform on uh, Twitter as well as on LinkedIn. So if you're on any of those platforms and want to say hi, please, please send us your eye. We will be happy to respond and uh, bring you on. But yeah, let's let's go with the first news of the week. And I think this news is very fresh. Actually, as a matter of fact, I didn't even put it on the newsletter. It was so fresh. It's actually Meta and Amazon that are teaming up with a new in-app shopping feature on Facebook and Instagram. And the reason it really caught my attention is that obviously everyone has been starting to talk about TikTok shop and how the rise of TikTok shop is actually blowing away a lot of people. And when you think about Meta and the fact that they kind of give, give up on their plan of going live shopping and kind of all their commerce, but they're still very active in the space trying to do things. And I think with this partnership with Amazon, this is actually going to change the game in my point of view, because per the article from TechCrunch that I'm showing here on stage, they are saying that, and I kind of agree with them, there's really a multiple play. First of all is to, you know, Amazon wants to leverage the Facebook and Instagram audience give that support for all their creator and the brands that are on those platforms to directly be able to sell on the Amazon platform. But the second thing is with this iOS and, you know, all the, the data privacy and the challenge of understanding where your audience is coming from, how do you, how is that actually converting? The fact that you have those two elements getting together now, I think it's a really interesting play from the attribution perspective. So I don't know what you think, Matt, and love to hear you for there. I, Nicholas, in, your, in our world and in our conversation so far on this podcast, TikTok has kind of dominated the conversation because it's it's the newest, latest thing. It's going after the youngest generation and the youngest platform for shoppers. So it's like a new, you know, like a new fresh car or a new baby or something like that. And I think it's this, the Facebook Instagram dynamic getting involved in this is smart because they're not really going after the same customer. So, you know, when you're going after the baby boomer and, and the younger generations, they live more on Facebook and Instagram than TikTok. In fact, they probably don't even have TikTok accounts, but there's, there's, they've got disposable income, they're viable consumers. And I think uh, Facebook and Instagram is smart to get involved like this. Yeah, um, that's, I, I think it's going to, I, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out. And I think the next couple of months are going to be really interesting. The The one thing though, that everyone needs to know is that Facebook will not, I mean, Facebook and Instagram will not give away on their commission. So, you know, you as a seller, you'll have to pay Facebook plus you're actually going to have to pay Amazon. So I'm curious to see how brand are going to adopt that because I think Facebook and, and Instagram are taking 5% cuts already on the top line. So it's pretty, pretty significant, substantial number from my understanding. 
So my topic, and this is not really a, a positive, but just something that you know we saw in the news, shipping companies cutting jobs. So there's a number of companies, including UPS and FedEx, that are that are seeing a slowdown in e-com and they're actually cutting jobs uh, within the fourth quarter or leading into the biggest gift giving weekend, which is Black Friday weekend, which is in two weeks. Um, kind of surprising for me because in my world with uh, QVC and HSN and uh, all the different places that um, that my team works, uh, things are rocking and uh, um, things are moving fast. They're, uh, they're successful, things are selling. And I think on the reverse side of that, people are worried about getting their products on time. And if they're gifts and if they're Christmas gifts or whatever they are, will the consumer receive the product in time? So now that these big companies, these shipping companies are cutting jobs, that makes that conversation even more important. Like, will what will happen with my gift that I'm going to ship if if the UPS or you know FedEx has less and less drivers on the road? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think it's it's really a, an interesting perspective. You know, the the reason I was interested personally with this news is that you know typically shipping companies see things we don't see fine advance, right? And so the fact that they are cutting jobs. They are worried, right? They are worried. I mean, obviously, they are seeing the economy and they're seeing it. there's some slowdown somewhere and they just don't want to be eaten because their margin is so slow, right? So, so, so low. So I think, I think it, it may well be, you know, like some worrisome. Now on the complete opposite side and to be, to stay, to remain positive, we also have to remember that when the pandemic happened, everyone cut job as well on the shipping company and they were, they realized this was a really bad move. Yeah. So it, you know, it's not because they do that. They always have it right. So hopefully it's one of the situation where the economy is still, still up, but I think, you know, people are worried. I was actually, I, we actually did a, an event with Wells Fargo and a couple of the CEO on the e side. And, I, and I'll tell you, the main topic was the economy and how things are moving, cost of acquisition going up so crazy of customer acquisition. So people are concerned for sure. Yeah. Q3 was a rough, a rough quarter. Credit card bills are up. All other bills are up. It's an interesting time to do this because normally these companies load up and, and add, add headcount this time of year. Seasonal, seasonal jobs are a big, big thing. So it is a little, it is a little worrisome, but hopefully, hopefully it's not an indicator that things are going in, in the wrong direction. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So my third news of the week is regarding an article that was recently published on the information where the uh, person was talking about TikTok tipping and was able to measure how much TikTok tipping was happening during live stream. And you know what that number is, Matt? No. It's no. 250 million. Do you believe that $250 million of actual tipping that happened during the li during live streaming? And, you know, I, I don't know for, for, for you, I have seen some of that. So this is like TikTok number, but I have seen actually on live stream people tipping, you know, you can buy the flowers for, I think on TikTok, you can buy the, the flowers or even the gift. I think it's on, on Facebook is the stars, but this is a pretty substantial number. What, what do you think about it? 250 million is that across the world or in the US? And that's a good question. Now that you're asking me, I can't uh, remember. Now I'll have to go that, back and look at my numbers again. Well, that that sounds like such a cartoonish large impossibility and I didn't even know about this this tipping uh, concept. I didn't really understand it. I guess it's for supporting uh friends and family that are live streaming without buying the product, but you know, if you're going to support your friend or your family, I would think you'd want to purchase the product. Um, I didn't know about the tipping idea. It's very, it's an interesting uh, concept. I don't think any of the live streamers or uh, live sellers are looking for that kind of dynamic. They're looking to, to sell a product. 250 million, it, it, that blows my mind. I mean, if you think about it, right, it's, 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 so actually I got the number it's in the third quarter, TikTok users sent more than 250 million worth of digital gift to the U S based streamer on the video app. Wow. Right? So this is, this is the stat. This is the number published uh, 16 hours ago by, by the information. So sorry for not knowing just that. The tip. Just the tip. 250 million, just a tip through one, one thing, TikTok. 
yeah for TikTok. but 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 guess what you know we we actually additionally have tipping enabled on our platform and what we're saying is that it's not like the most popular feature and obviously TikTok is not just doing live shopping right they are doing live stream across the board what we're saying is that when when people when the creator is actually the one selling and they have their friend and family typically on the room as well just to support them they will tip and so i think it's very much like hey you're my friend and let me tip you and they're not actually purchasing product so so i think it's kind of a mix i i will say though i have seen on facebook some some folks really tipping evilly on on live shopping you know sending stars it, I mean, you know, you buy those in advance and like actually the host was like, hey, send me some stars. If you know, if you're not shopping, send me some stars. And like she was keep saying that and people were actually tipping. It's, it was it was it was actually pretty, I think, like because she was promoting so heavily, it's probably a, a, a nice source of income for that person as well. I mean, just that's interesting. Like, I'm old school radio. I started in radio way back when. And a, a common move in, in U.S. radio is like, you know, the fourth caller that gets this answer right will receive a free, you know, two free concert tickets to the upcoming concert, that kind of thing. So that solicits phone callers and solicits listeners. And this is an old, old you know, way of creating a buzz on the radio station, that kind of thing. Gifting a single thing or maybe for three listeners, they get a pair of tickets, that kind of thing. I get that. But for tipping, everyone's tipping their, you know, and, and soliciting for tips. I'm not sure I understand it. It, yes. it kind of takes the focus away from the the live streamer and the content creator. Like, are you trying to create sales for the products you're selling, or are you trying to earn tips like a, a waitress or a waiter? Well, I think I think you know when when the the, the content is not meant for selling, maybe it makes more sense. Like, for instance, if it's a, if you're capturing a passive sale, so let's say you're recording a podcast or something, and then you're creating content for adding value. And then you can buy the product or you can actually tip the creator that is doing this. I think it makes sense. If you're in a pure setting for selling, yeah, I do agree that having tipping might be distracting. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so before we go, I want to talk about, I listened to your, your podcast earlier this week with Stephanie Garcia. And you were talking about, you know, she's a, she's a very influential content creator, live streamer herself. And she teaches and educates on, on the practice and best practices. And something that came out of your conversation with her which struck a chord with me that you and I have spoken about. She called it the hook or the point of sale and how important that is. And how do you, how do you earn the hook or how do you get the hook or how, what kind of dynamic do you need to get that customer to make an informed decision and purchase the product like in the moment, right then and there. So my world from QVC, it's all about dollars per minute. So we, we kind of educate on reaching a crescendo and you educate, 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 and then there's crescendo of, okay, now the customer knows enough to buy something, and then you repeat it. So it's like going up a hill, education, and then coming down the hill, repeating the same things. So in our dynamic, just like live streaming across e-commerce and everywhere else, all these platforms, you have to entertain, and you have to engage, and then you have to educate and inform and get her or him excited about buying the product. How do you look at the hook? Indeed. Yeah, it, it, it's fascinating, right? This this question, this notion of hook. I, I don't think I have like I have my own opinion about the hook, and I think it, you know, I, I think it it come down to the hook, like what is gonna get you to stop scrolling, right? And you, especially when you're on social media, what's gonna make you stop scrolling and say, hey, let me, there's something interesting about those guys and or this guy or this pro, this show, like I need to see and stop. And I think for me, my argument has always been like. The, the thing like on video, the fi first five seconds are extremely crucial, right? And so that's why you want to kind of tease the end of the video right first, like so you can grab the attention of like what the sh shopper can expect or what the user is going to expect by watching this video. With live stream, you can't do that because you might be coming in, you know, at the beginning of the live, at the middle of the live, at the end of the live, like right now we, we're starting, we have like, we have a little bit of audience, but we didn't have any audience like five minutes before. And then we had a bunch of audience right at the beginning. So it's really by eating. And so how do you hook those folks to, to get stay with us? And if, uh, by the way, if you want to comment, please let us know. We'd love to, uh, to know who, where you are, where you're from. And so my point of view has been the only thing that's going to make you stop scrolling, right? Is the background. Like you want something fancy and exciting. Like what, what can, 
like what makes you stop scrolling and then once the people start stop scrolling your background is exciting or anything and i'm not preaching because you see my background is not really great <laughs> right now uh, but i will say that at the moment people stop scrolling you want to engage them you want to give them the content that's going to get excited they're going to get to learn and, I, and that's where i think your hook in, in your point of view makes more sense well i i've narrowed it down this is how i look at it educate illustrate demonstrate repeat the repeat part is because the customer the consumer the the scroller is is chiming in and out they're turning the channel or they're they're scrolling on their on their websites or they're through their different apps they're going through different things so you have to repeat the same things over and over so then when you repeat we talk about your top three selling features even though you might have 10 or 15 things to say about your product and you think they're all great narrow it down to your top three and repeat those things throughout the presentation to make sure the customer and the uh, shopper is aware of the most important aspects of that product. Brand positioning is important. I always talk about hitting that a couple of times. They have to know who you are. No matter how big the company is, you're going to talk to a new viewer or a new consumer, and you have to educate him or her about who you are. And then demonstration, that's where I think you really get the hook of someone paying attention. Like if you're demonstrating or illustrating the effect of the product, I work with a brand, Givenchy, a French brand, through QVC, and one of the hooks the, in that presentation, we saw a lot of lipstick, a lot of different lipsticks. And the, the, one of the big points of sell is watching a model demonstrate the product. When she demos the product and applies it on herself, you see an effect. And that yeah. effect of how great she looks creates sales. So I'm always from the background of I'm not producing anymore, but when I did produce, I'd be like, okay, let's get to that demo, demo quick, 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 because I know she's educating, educating, educating. And then you got to give her a point of like, okay, this product's great. And then repeat those same things for people that chime in late. That, that's fascinating, right? It's like using the production element as the hook itself, right? And so, I mean, I think what it says is that there's no one true answer for the hook for live streaming, right? It's, it sounds like it's, it's, a, it's a, a, com, a, a complex notion of different elements that you need to consider, either from the way you educate, either from the actual way you, the word you say, how you say them, the background and the production, like what's the production quality and everything. It's really an art. I'm so excited that uh, we got this conversation. So Matt, do you have any special announcement for this week before we wrap up? No, just I, I, we're getting into it two more weeks before Black Friday. You know, it's, it's a big, big time of year for everyone. So I want everyone to take a breath, you know, try to try to stay calm and, and stay focused on what you're doing in this v-commerce and e-commerce world. Things will be great. You've already laid the groundwork. So I, I'm hoping we finish the, the month of November really strong and go into the final weeks of the fourth quarter. Everyone be successful. That's awesome. I, my tease of the week is, and you will not know of that, we will have someone very special that has tons of data on everything e after Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that's going to share with us the inside out of those, what happened from an e perspective. And this is a person that is really deep in the e space, that has access to first party data. It's going to be really awesome. She's going to come on show for a couple of minutes just to share that. Exciting. Uh, tune in, tune in, tune in. Keep keep watching, keep listening. And if you have any things that you as a listener would like to hear, please let us know. This uh, show is the V-Commerce show. It's here every Friday 11 on different platform. We're also posting it on the live e-commerce podcast. Thank you for all your support. We'll love to have you. Thank you for your comments. Matt, I guess I see you next week. Right? Yes, Nicholas. Have a great weekend and a great week ahead. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.